just north of the city of Limerick, there is the small village of Ardnacrusha, which is significant for being home to one of the greatest feats of engineering in the history of the Irish state, which is the Ardnacrusha power plant. Built between 1924 and 1929 at a cost of £5 million, which was a fifth of the young Irish government's budget, the power plant originally supplied most, if not all, of the electricity supply for the country. At the time, it was one of the largest hydroelectric schemes in the world, since it required over 12 kilometres of man-made canal to be built to supply the power plant, as well as splitting the River Shannon, which is the longest river in the British Isles. The dam contains four turbines, three were originally built in 1929, and one was added later in 1934. Originally the dam was designed to have six turbines, though the last two were never added, as the project ran out of money, and then later, when money would have been available, they realised that there simply wasn't enough water in the River Shannon to supply six turbines. When running at full capacity, 400 tonnes of water per second flow through the turbines, and it produces 86 megawatts, or less than 2% of the electricity demand for the entire country. We started our tour of the station outside next to a fountain made by one of the old turbine blades, and on the side of the building you can see all conveniently labelled cables going off to different local areas. Two of these go to the national grid, most of the rest go to the local area. We climb to the top of the dam, which is 100 feet or about 30 meters high, and see the reservoir which kept a minimum depth of 10 meters. All lot of depths, all very crucial to operating the dam. Running on rails on the top of the dam is this uh, trash cleaner, which is used every day to scrape the front of the dam and keep the slipways clear going to the turbines. Any rubbish that goes into the upper Shannon typically takes about 72 hours at most to reach the grill here at Ardnacrusha. Looking out at the front of the dam, you can see the four penstocks, which are used to supply water to the turbines, as well as the fish tower out the front. These were originally painted black, but were soon painted white, as the black caused the pipes to overheat. The glass dome on top there is over the old control room. Walking along the top of the dam, you can see down the head race and the banks on the side, which are patrolled every day to make sure there isn't any leaks, because, you know, that would kind of be bad. At the other side of the dam are the two navigation locks, which are used to get boats from the upper to the lower Shannon. This is the only way to the upper Shannon from Limerick City. The total drop is 30 metres, the first lock dropping 60 feet and the second 40 feet. For some reason feet is used in all these measurements. Across the way at the side of the turbine hall you can see the new control room overlooking the spillway which is used when the turbines are not operating. Today there was two generators uh, running which is why there wasn't much water in the slipway but over by the turbines. One of the more curious things about Ardnacrusha was this little blue hut which stood outside the building. Ardnacrusha had a bunker built in it during World War II in case it was ever attacked in an air raid. This blue thing was for people who didn't make it to the bunker, and so would dive in the hut in the event of an air raid. The guide was explaining that a school tour group broke the handle off a few weeks ago. Ardnacrusha was the beginning of the electrification of Ireland, a huge project that would last until the 50s. Of course, for such a big thing, advertising was needed to tell people about the great benefits of electricity and also its dangers. These advertisements mainly target at women and farmers, who were the ones who were most obviously benefited from electricity at the time. Indeed, the Minister for Industry in the 40s, Sean Lamasse, was quoted saying they hoped for a future where marriage dowries would not be measured in cattle, but in electrical appliances. And looking at modern wedding gifts, his dream has been realised. Moving on, we get a view of the turbine room. This is the closest we got to the turbine room. Of course, this is still an active power plant. There are four turbines, three Francis and one Kaplan turbine. The Kaplan turbine is the furthest away and is also small so you can't really see it. At the back of the hall, the blue square, is the new control room. And directly in front of it is a crane which is used to lift the turbines out for maintenance. They are lifted towards this hole and onto this jack. On the left side you can see blue uh, air canisters which are used for starting the turbines. The turbines are started with compressed air before the water is released. Going upstairs, we entered the original 
control room. A semicircular room filled with all sorts of dials and buttons and switches that was used from 1929 until the late 90s, when it was replaced with by the new control room on the other side of the building. This is a far cry from the computers and automated systems that currently control the power plant. Back in the day, uh, two operators would do 12-hour shifts in this room and would never leave, except maybe for the odd toilet break. This is in stark contrast to how the current system operates, where in fact most of the power plant is controlled by the Turlock Hill power plant in Wicklow on the other side of the country. Operators go home at 5 and they only come in for one hour over the weekend, you know, to make sure everything's fine. There's, even though this is a largely unused and obsolete room, there are still a few switches that actually do things, and obviously these are covered up to stop us tourists messing with things. So that was the end of the tour of our Prussia, which was a very nice opportunity. Absolutely free tour, but you must pre-book, and I actually have no idea how this was even organised. But it's a thing they're doing to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the power plant, which says a lot that a lot of the machinery here is still original and still going after 90 years. <laughs>